Hello, hello, what's up everybody? This is another, uh, well, not exactly Borderless Podcast, but it is This Week in the Americas. Normally we jump right into the uh, the interview that I do with uh, Hervoye, or the show that I do with Hervoye Morich, um, once a week on the TNT radio, but uh, this week I thought I would start out and just do some housekeeping and talk a little bit about... Um, but what's going on here? So, uh, so yeah, I hope that you've been enjoying the weekly show that I've been doing with her voye. Um, I think a lot of people have been telling me that they listen a lot and they get a lot of information out of it. So that's great. And um, I know that you know not everybody needs international health insurance or you know the strategy calls that I do sometimes. And so what I've done, and, and people ask, you know, how how they can um, help and that they want to uh, support the show. And so I've set up a page. It's a borderlessblog.com slash donate. So if you'd like to send any money in, it's greatly appreciated. You know, I, I do have expenses by putting out the uh, the podcast as far as just equipment, server space, uh, the time that it takes me to edit and all that kind of stuff. So if you'd like, if you get value from... Um, from the content that I put out, then please do go to uh, to the you know consider uh, donating or sending money in to support the show. I, and uh, the more people that support, the more stuff that I can do, and um, the more content I can produce. And um, so please let me know. And if you send in a donation of twenty dollars or more, then I will read your note on the the podcast. And you can do that at the uh, confirmation page. So, yeah, please consider doing that. And also, always, you know, if you need international health insurance, then uh, you can go to borderlesshealthinsurance.com. That also greatly helps me out. Another thing you can do, obviously, is share the show or you can write a review. Okay, so you can go to uh, Apple Podcasts and write a review for the show. I haven't read um, the, uh, the reviews uh, in a while, but I thought that I would read two recent ones. So, uh, one of the ones I got was from Gnome W and it says, if you're into freedom and not bullshit, this isn't for you. If you like getting your information from the mainstream media, it is for you. If you are a free thinking individual. All right. And that's a five star review. Thank you, Gnome W. And then I, we got a not so good one and it says not useful. I was looking for a podcast that was fact-driven, but it is very anecdotal. Do not agree with their stance on making fun of other beliefs either. All right. So I don't know who that is, or uh, I'm not sure what they're talking about, but they were not uh, impressed with the podcast. <laughs> but that's okay. And so if you uh, did not have that um, impression of the show and you like it, then please consider go going to Apple Podcasts and uh, write me a review and... I can also read your review on the podcast and uh, really helps me out. So yeah, let me know um, if, uh, if you like, it. you can also send me any feedback at info at borderless blog.com. So all that out of the way, um, this is the newest uh, this week in the Americas and I hope that you enjoy it and I'll talk to you soon. Borderless. Welcome back, Mr. James. Hello. Hello. Hervoye. How you doing today? I'm doing all right. You you sound kind of uh, sleepy. How's it going? No, no, no. <laughs> all good. This is my first uh, show with you as a father, so it's uh, that's a big deal. But I'm I've been sleeping all right. My uh, my wife's been really stepping up and taking care of the uh, of the baby. How it's uh, how does it? I mean, how's how is it? Does it feel a bit magical? What's uh, what's going on? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. The um, baby's very, you know, all good um, and, uh, you know, very good looking baby, of course. And uh, so, uh, yeah, our experience here, we had it here in San Miguel de Allende, uh, had uh, great staff um, and a doctor that we've worked with that was uh, very good. And also a doula who helped us and she had a natural birth. And um, yeah, so it was a long night, but um, everybody was uh was very helpful and, and what i like about it down here too is that um although it was in a hospital i mean you pretty much just uh you know you have the room there and they give you a lot of freedom to uh to do what you want to uh I, they never made me wear a mask or anything uh, or anybody else and um you know as far as what we wanted to do with the baby uh, as far as vaccine circumcision all that kind of stuff that's completely up to the parents and um 
So, yeah. So, you know, we just had a doula there and they kind of, uh, you know, had the lights low and aromatherapy and other types of stuff. But we also had the doctor there. And so, um, yeah, it was very nice. Uh, interesting, um, interesting experience. That's for sure. Just make sure you get the kid on the uh, 75 dose CDC vaccine schedule. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. Thanks. I'm not joking. It's I think it's like uh, it was 72, and then uh, I, I had a guest. Uh, I was looking at some of the material prepping, and I think it's up to now like 75 doses. And then you know n- now we had one of the uh, Biden uh, health advisors saying God gave us two arms uh, because you know one for the flu shot and one for the COVID shot. So <laughs> I saw that. These people, yeah. These people I mean, come on. By the time by the time it gets to uh, 75 or whatever i mean come on that's gotta wake some people up i mean geez you know that's i, I think us is the 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 highest number um mm-hmm. regimen uh, uh in the world isn't it that's why they have the highest uh rate of autism yeah is that right and yeah, uh, yeah um, and i think by 75 doses you probably got enough aluminum in you to uh, call yourself iron man um anyways <laughs> uh, you know I, I i i found your tweet i i, I was kind of shocked to hear trump speaking in in this way where he's now summoning the ghost of rodrigo duterte from the philippines who's uh, been yeah. basically shooting drug dealers uh, on the streets and as i said that in mexico at least he's talking about america i think he's talking about the u.s but in mexico we've got crazy violent drug dealers and regarding them i don't care how you deal with them uh, but I'm assuming uh, Trump is more, m- more talking about just like perhaps nonviolent drug dealers. I don't know. But what's your reaction to that? Yeah, here it is. So fast, and I'm calling on Republicans and Democrats immediately to institute, to get to Washington and institute the death penalty for drug dealers. You will no longer have a problem. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's completely stupid out of all the things. I mean, I, it's amazing how, um, you know, the Republicans um, can just, you know, they get a complete layup. Anybody could uh, could win an election and then they just blow it. I mean, it's it's amazing how they're able to do that. But um, I mean, I still think that they'll they'll have some wins in the midterms coming up. But, you know, like uh, so many things that you know, the majority of people are going to be with them on, you know, inflation, um, you know, the, the, the crazy uh, trans stuff going on and, and um, you know, drag your kids to drag shows or whatever it's called. And and um, the economy, um, Ukraine, all, all kinds of other things. Uh, I think we're just about to hit 80 billion dollars. That will be uh, U.S. taxpayer money going to Ukraine since February. Um, so all these different issues, and then all of a sudden, let's uh, really ramp it up on. Oh yeah, let's uh, you know the drug war. You know, okay, yeah, that's a real winning one. And uh, you know, let's we're just gonna go and I mean that it, first of all, killing um, quote unquote drug dealers is uh, it's a ridiculous proposal. Um, I mean, there's you know, especially in the United States, it's pretty. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was in high school in the United States, like it seems like every other kid was selling weed. I'm sure it hasn't gotten any better. And uh, prescription drugs and, um, you know, so are you going to uh, shoot every person that sells uh, sells uh, a little bit of Coke or weed or are you going to like shoot? Um, I guess you're going to be killing millions of people. Um, and uh, that's just, you know, it, it, I guess, uh, you know, there is a lot of people that are they're worried about um, all the people that are overdosing on uh, fentanyl and and some of these other drugs. And, yeah, it's a very sad thing, especially in middle America. It's mostly a uh, an economic problem, I would say, and a social problem. Basically, uh, people that are feeling uh, alienated from their own society, people that uh, maybe the manufacturing or other businesses have left, uh, you know, what they call the Rust Belt area and um, other reasons that they feel hopeless. Maybe they've uh, been sent uh, overseas to uh, some of these stupid wars and got PTSD, whatever. And uh, or, you know, another thing is that they get prescribed. You know, this has been... Uh, obviously been exposed now that uh, the, the Sackner family was, uh, you know, bribing, had a whole, uh, uh, you know, the scheme going on where they're bribing all kinds of doctors to prescribe these uh, opiate pills. And then, you know, people had, had gotten hooked on that. And so, yeah, there's lots of, you know, there, there's, there's lots of things that aren't good there, but just, uh, you know, okay, let's go ahead and 
and shoot um, or, you know, kill all the drug dealers. It's just, it's dumb. It's not something you should be that, that, you know, it's, if, if you want to get all these people that, you know, that they're probably um, not on board with, you know, the, the, all the stuff that um, Biden is saying, you know, I think that he's really been um, uh, going in hard with his base. I think that's what his last, you know, dark Brandon speech and, you know, whatever it's, it's really just the, the core base that's that's with him on that kind of stuff. And so you got all these people that are up for grabs and then the Republicans, uh, you know, they, they want to go with uh, the kind of the, the, these fringe issues that I just think it's a loser and it's a stupid strategy. So I don't know. I wasn't impressed by that. And you made a good point. Uh, it's quite an ironic thing to say by Trump as one of the biggest vaccine pushers on the planet. And for, conservatives or republicans or people who still support trump i'm like they why are you keeping this is the elephant in the room and um yeah yeah he, he just won't give up that vaccine anyway, alex jones came out and said he's disowning him finally uh i'm going for oh, ron yeah, i didn't see uh, that <laughs> yeah he did a clip specifically and saying he's going for like ron uh desantis and so DeSantis. Yeah, and I would agree with you. Like this, it's a social and economic issue, and I've, like I've said, like you know, I've lived in a bunch of other countries, and I've not seen anything at all like I see in America. Like you can see, you know, living in Kazakhstan, like almost nobody uses pharmaceuticals uh, or or um, you know Mexico or Croatia, but it's just like in America, everyone is on legal or illegal drugs. I remember reading like. Pretty much all the country, like I'm not even joking. I, I think I read studies where like 50% of Americans are on legal pharmaceutical drugs and then the other half almost are like on illegal drugs, you know, cocaine, whatever, fentanyl, all this other stuff. And and even people that I used to know, like I, over time I've discovered, like you heard stories about people I used to know that I thought were just, you know, normal folks. And then I hear stories about them uh, having all these crazy addictions to, you know, pharma drugs and it's just like yeah. it's widespread in america it's crazy this is brave new world soma uh stuff and that's another thing that really disgusts me about the american culture is this big how, how they've let themselves be conned by the big pharma and people you know with taking all of these pharmaceutical pills it's like stop it you don't need any of it there are so many natural things you can do to <laughs> to you know yeah a anyways yeah um, i'm yeah I, i've mm -hmm. you know in the past i've been um you know, really into different, uh, uh, you know, even um, stuff for uh, nootropics, which is, you know, like um, cognitive enhancement, um, you know, you know, I wouldn't put vitamins and supplements into that category of pharmaceuticals, but I was really into all that kind of stuff. And, and, I, but I think that in a, in a lot of ways, even the, uh, the, the supplements, I mean, not all of them, there are times you need supplements, but a lot of that is just kind of a, a marketing game too. And yeah, I mean, honestly, you just, uh, you know, my, where my, my thoughts are now is just, you, you know, you have to eat healthy and, um, you know, do a decent amount of uh, exercise, you know, and, uh, and you're pretty good. I mean, your body is, is really amazing. Uh, you know, obviously if you have some big problems and you need to get that dealt with, but for the most part, uh, you know, we've been given some pretty amazing bodies that self-regulate and, um, you know, you don't need to be, uh, it's not necessary to be taking all these, uh, these different, uh, things that are marketed, towards you. So yeah, I've definitely toned that down. And, and as far as like recreational drug use, I mean, I'm still very libertarian as far as that goes. I mean, I, I think that everything should be legal personally. And if people want to take things, you know, they get addicted to things and all that. I mean, that's, that's really their problem, honestly. Um, and that's something that, you know, along with, with freedoms, you need to have responsibilities. So, I mean, some people can handle it. Some people can, I don't know what to say, but I'm, you know, I, I don't think it's my, responsibility to um you know uh, to restrict things from people that um that i don't think is good for them and so and i don't think you know i think that the drug war is is just that it's complete failure horrible um you know it's an expansion of power for the police state wasted billions probably trillions of dollars at this point um for decades uh most of the all the carnage that happens all throughout the border and Mexico and even all throughout the United States with all the gang wars this is all due to the drug war. And uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a very basic libertarian position, but I think that it's the correct one. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't see a, a, a better solution. I just think you got to stop it. People need to be 
responsible for what they put in their own bodies. And, um, and yeah. And, uh, so yeah, definitely running around and, and ramping it up and, and, uh, you know, killing people for, you know, what I would consider to be a victimless crime of, of selling drugs is stupid. And I mean, I, but I'm all for being much harder on violent criminals. You know, I think that they should absolutely be uh, law and order for, um, for violent criminals and, uh, you know, people that, uh, uh, you know, do other things like that. that are actually violating people's rights, but I just don't find it to be any type of drug use. I don't care what it is to be, uh, that people are voluntarily doing. I don't find that to be violating any rights and it's not the government's problem. Yeah. I went through a big phase of, you know, Dr. Mercola and all of this stuff, who's I still think is fantastic. And I used to take a huge quantity of vitamins and supplements. And I've, as you said, as you get older in life, you're like, ah, screw that. And you just eat just natural foods, not processed, you know, fruits, vegetables, meat. Um, but, but although I do still take some key supplements, I think it's wise mm -hmm. to whittle down uh, the amount, but like key ones like vitamin D, vitamin C, uh, mm -hmm. even vitamin uh, B and stuff for when you, you know, I, I overdose on vitamin C when I'm starting to get sick and, and it really works. Uh, or, you know, key thing like antiviral things like uh, oregano oil or, or, you know, uh, things like that. And melatonin for sleeping. It's uh, very uh, good. Even Marcola has been saying like, uh, in, in other ways, it's, it's good for you. And you've also been commenting on the IRS coming for Venmo. Your, your further thoughts, um, the ramping up of uh, the IRS, um, uh, you know, 87,000 new agents, uh, and, and now a number of uh, applications, you know, like Venmo and PayPal are requiring you to submit, um, just, you know, submit more information and, and tax documents. Uh, what's your reaction? Yeah, I don't, you know, I, uh, that 87,000, um, I've been, I've, you know, I listen to some people talk about that. I'm trying to really, I guess that came out of one study that just seems so unrealistic to me. I don't see how they can even train that many people or, or if, you know, if, I, I don't see how that can be a real number, but they're definitely dumping a lot of money into the IRS. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, they, they were just saying that uh, uh, they were only going for a uh, top 1% or whatever language they used, you know, of course, bullshit. Um, it, it's always been the case that, you know, the, the government sneaks in and says, oh, you know, with the income tax was the same way. A lot of other things This is only for the rich people. We're only going after the rich. And, you know, um, I guess there are people that uh, a lot of people that haven't figured this out yet. But, uh, you know, the government is run by the rich. OK, the whole this whole democracy thing is a sham. All right. So, yeah, you have uh, the uh, you know, all the people in the Senate, the Congress. I mean, these are they're uh, wealthy. They've, if not, when they get when they're when they get there, they become wealthy through connections and all this type of stuff. And uh, they get lobbied by other wealthy people who all live within the, um, you know, the, uh, the uh, DC belt area beltway. And, um, and so, yeah, they all suck off the teeth of the government of the taxpayers. And uh, so they need to, uh, you know, they need to uh, squeeze some more uh, blood out of there. So they're going to have some more people that uh, they've been convinced that if they get some more agents out there, they can get, all these people that are, you know, making money online, uh, side hustles and gigs, you know, selling and uh, buying and selling stuff on eBay, um, you know, uh, you Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, uh, Airbnb, uh, all this type of stuff that basically people are using to pay the bills, barely getting by. Well, you know, they want to take that Avenue out. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, this has most of the people that are doing that. I mean, it's the younger generation, right? So uh, probably the, you know, Z and uh, Y and X and millennials, you know, these are the ones that uh, have really been at the tail end of this since the economy started falling apart after 2008. Um, they don't, you know, have a lot of stock. So they haven't, you know, they, a lot of them don't have real estate. So they haven't been benefiting from the rise throughout their whole life from, um, real estate and stocks like a lot of the boomers have. And so those are a lot of ones that have been just, uh, you know, getting by uh, uh, with, um, you know, these these uh, part-time gigs, side hustles and whatever. And a lot of them aren't paying taxes because they can't. I mean, you know, the one of the big secrets is that uh, 
you know, people always talk about tax cheats and the richer tax cheats. You know, really, the, the rich aren't tax cheats. They, you know, they know the tax uh, laws and they have, you know, armies of uh, accountants and lawyers that are able to help them legally avoid paying taxes. The people that are cheating on taxes are small business owners, you know, um, again, just hustlers and stuff because because they have to in order to keep their business afloat and uh, in order to pay the bills. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so that's, you know, that's where the majority of the uh, of the money is these days. And so I'm sure they're going to be using all kinds of, um, you know, probably mostly, uh, you know, they're coming up with different ways that they can uh, track online all your payments, uh, where they're coming from, where they're going to. And um, yeah, I'm sure that's they got all kinds of people that are, you know, know more about tech and stuff like that. And as far as them, you know, everybody was, uh, uh, you know, sharing a lot about that, you know, they were asking for people, the IRS agents that knew how to use firearms and deadly force. I mean, that's nothing new. So I guess a lot of people don't know that, but the, you know, the, the IRS, uh, I mean, they, they will have been like that for a long time, you know, decades. They'll, you owe money, they'll come at you with guns and arrest you. And, you know, it's the only debt you can get, uh, get put in a jail for. So, you know, they've outlawed debt prisons, but, uh, if you owe taxes, they will definitely throw you into prison. So, yeah, that's, um, you know, they, they use strong arm tactics and it's, uh, you know, it's a shakedown. It's, um, you know, uh, you know, that's a, a lot of people say taxation is theft, but it's really more like extortion. So, yeah, they just have more people out there that are extorting people. Let's talk Chile. No, not the food, but the country. And uh, I recently met a Chilean and um he was saying how Chile is crazy. It's like locked down, the, all the COVID passport stuff. And um, but we had the they were voting for a new progressive leftist um, constitution, and that was rejected by the people. I think like sixty two percent or something. I don't know. But what's sort of a your reaction to that? Yeah. Oh man. You know, I I, uh, I had this ready to go. Um, and then it looks like they changed the thing online. Uh, oh no, I found it. Okay. Yeah. They changed it up, but I found it. So check this out. This is what they were voting on. Um, just, uh, Sunday, I believe it was. And, um, I'm just going to read some of this and this is from the, uh, the constitution that they were voting on. These are some of the rights that were written there. Okay. Right to life, right to personal integrity, Prohibition of the death penalty, torture, enforced disappearance, slavery, human trafficking, and exile, right to truth, justice, memory, and repatriation, right to equality before the law, right to non-discrimination, right to progressive autonomy of children and adolescents, a right to full development of the personality and the use of one's own language, right to child protection, a right to life and environment free of violence, right to universal accessibility. I have no idea what that means. Right to neo neurodiversity, right to request, right to dignified treatment, social reintegration and communication, a right to a decent old age, right to education, right to care for the environment, right to freedom of education, right to health, right to social security, right to work and free choice to equitable remuneration, freedom of association, labor, partition and strike, recognition of domestic work, right to care, right to decent housing, Okay, that's enough. But <laughs> oh, right to worldview. <laughs> uh, that's what I said. It's is like crazy. you might as well just put in like unicorns and um, you know ponies. Everybody has a right to, uh, and it keeps going. Right to freedom of exp uh, expression. Right to create social media. Right to personal data protection. Right to leisure. I mean, right to read. How can you have all these rights written? And I mean, it doesn't mean any if you have a right to everything, you have a right to nothing doesn't make any sense. And so, yeah, they, they voted it down. Um, 62% of the people rejected it. And I think 80% of the people actually did vote. So it did have a good turnout. And um, uh, I mean, so yeah, so they've lost two years. They, this is what the, all they've been doing for the last two years is writing the stupid thing. And, um, and they rejected it. So now what, okay, they got to go back and they're going to, you know, have to get something that people are going to, you know, try to accept. But I mean, I, I don't know. I it's I don't I don't know what these people think like 
a republic or you know these this constitution means i mean with this they think it's just a a, a wish list or you know something you write to santa claus or something I don't, I don't i just don't understand what you know it's just ridiculous yeah i mean this is uh like lawfare and i think this is i mean this is all like it sounds like the un sdgs that they're implementing and it's um it's it's totalitarian because they should just we should go you know if you go back to the old days of the u.s you had a few simple rules small government leave leave us alone and that's basically it and here when they say you have a right to all of this stuff like in mexico they say you have a right to education and basically they're saying you have you're obligated to government mandated education so it's like, that's what the right means. It's like, you don't have a right to do education the way you want. You have the right to do, you're you know, mandated to, to send your kid to the government school. And if you don't, we're going to confiscate your kid or, or something like that, you know? And this is all, it's nuts. And, and yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. so. Uh, I mean, yeah, the, so it's, it's, you know, the classical, how the, you know, the, all these republics constitution started with the idea of, you know, this classical liberal idea of, uh, you know, this Lockean idea uh, that, you know, Thomas Jefferson pretty much completely ripped off of John Locke and it's, you know, life, liberty, and property that those, you know, that all these types of negative rights stem from your life and what you do with your labor and your body, your body is your property and what, um, you mix uh, the property with your labor, then then that's then your property and, you know, so homesteading theory and all this type of stuff. And this is what, what was the idea of these constitutions that they were to protect your natural rights that were given to you by by God or your creator or whatever you wanted to, however you wanted to think about it. And um, yeah, so nobody, you know, can, you have a right to not be killed. You have a right to, you know, uh, have property that, that that you own and that kind of thing. But you know, they, they've really kind of flipped the whole thing of this positive rights thing where, you you know, you, you could just I mean, if that's the case, then you could just make everything right. You know, like you're saying, uh, and that's what they've done here. So, uh, I mean, with, in, that, in that case, it's, you know, what's it's just whatever you want it to be. You know what I mean? I, you could just say you have a right to, uh, you know, like you, uh, one way of saying like you're saying education. It, if you say I have a right to education, then that means I have a right to get the government to force somebody to teach me. All right. So that's basically a, you know, right to slavery. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, you, why not? I mean, I, I, if, since there's no, you know, basic like moral foundation, I, I don't, then yeah, you could just create whatever rights you want to. And uh, you know, it's, it's, so yeah, I mean, that's what they've done here. And I guess that's, you know, the end result is that uh, you know, since you have no, kind of moral foundation or any logic to what it is that you're putting together here. There could just be whatever you want to. It's just very infantile. Well, two recent examples that you, you mentioned, one of the rights in the Chilean constitution that they were, had been proposing was rights to, you know, language or, or, or whatever, you know, inclusive, inc inclusive language or, or whatnot. Two recent mm -hmm. examples in Canada, uh, a Scotia bank customer, uh, you know, every time you log in to the Scotia bank app, he was saying you, you see the rainbow fascist flag, as Jim mm -hmm. Chatris uh, calls it, the LGBT plus Q, I whatever flag. Um, and it's in your face. And there are people that don't subscribe to that. It'd be like you logging in, everyone logging into their bank and seeing, you know, uh, a Christian cross or, 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 or whatever. I don't think that's OK, you know, uh, either. And so. He complained and they just said, you know what, we're shutting down, we're closing your account at Scotia Bank. Uh, you know, you're not on board with this new uh, religion, wokeism, globalism. And then you had uh, the other example in Ireland, the teacher refused to use uh, a bo uh, call a boy a girl or a girl a boy. I forget which one. Uh, and they're like, uh, they fired him. I think he's facing jail or, or fines. And but this is the inclusive tolerant. This is the right to, you know, inclusive language. And, and this is tolerance. This is, I mean, mm -hmm. this is what they're preaching. They, they say, oh, you have to be tolerant, but they're actually intolerant. They're not tolerating this teacher's view or this Scotiabank customer's view. They're not including it. They're excluding it. It's the op everything they say, it's, it's, it's opposite day. It's bizarro world. Everything is, is the opposite of what they <laughs> tell us. And um, I, I, I did want to go on to something you also tweeted, which uh, 
this is weird. Like, and let's, let's jump over to Argentina now. Because, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. you know, w- one of the things every week that you and I try to cover is the, the Americas from, uh, you know, Canada, U.S., down, you know, m- more Mexico, Central, South America. But uh, apparently in Argentina, someone created like a libertarian-ish Kyle Rittenhouse cultural center or something. And then it was <laughs> raided by like the Argentinian terrorist task force. Like, what what did, did, did you look into that what, what's going on there you know no i didn't but uh i, I just thought it was a funny tweet i mean i, I don't think that it's um it's something of of, of like huge importance or some, something but there was they did have a community center and it was called the kyle rittenhouse community center and evidently it was like a uh, uh, uh an anarcho-capitalist uh group there you know that uh, that created this and and uh so the other day man i, I don't know if you saw that the um uh the, the vice president of argentina almost got killed did you see that yeah there's different theories uh on that um you know that mm-hmm. it could have been a genu- genuine assault but i have seen commentary that it could have been a f- false flag um as well which is a classic mm-hmm. strategy you know to gin up um and then you saw so many Argentinians um, marching for that crook. Of course, I don't approve of anyone being uh, assassinated, but uh, she's a, a crook. And look how it worked. Like I, I, I don't care. You know, I, I wouldn't go marching for for these crook uh, politicians. But uh, anyways, yeah. What, I, what, what's your a lot of these marches people are those these people are paid. You know, it's all across the world. But um, yeah, so if people didn't see it. Uh, the some you know the the um, Vice president was just getting into her car and some guy just put a gun right to her face and and um, it pulled the trigger, but the gun did not go off. It was jammed and it did have a uh, full magazine in there. So uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe some people think it was uh, set up or something, but I mean, definitely looked pretty, pretty close. And and so I guess this Kyle Rittenhouse um, cultural center had put out a tweet that, you know, I, I don't know what exactly it said, but. Um, they don't like the vice president, so maybe they were making uh, some, you know, trolling with some smart remark or something about her, you know, and uh, and because of that, they sent the anti-terrorism unit to go surround the uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse Cultural Center in in uh, Argentina. So things are getting spicy. Yep, all over the place. And jumping back to Mexico, uh, interesting story for all of those people looking to flee to mexico uh interest in mexico real estate surges with 60 Mm percent increase in online um searches it goes on to say um hmm, they talk a lot about puerto vallarta uh basically the top uh, destinations are mexico canada i don't know why canada people are fleeing canada costa rica puerto rico belize panama uh, and it says that the average number of Mexico-related real estate searches in the U.S. increased to over 132,000, well over double the number of searches for properties in Canada. So basically, just more and more people are being interested in uh, in Mexico. Some of the hotspots are Puerto Vallarta, Tulum, which is uh, over by Cancun, or Cabo San Lucas. Um, and home seekers aren't just looking for their next vacation home but also a more joyous lifestyle and their very own slice of narco paradise. I, I, I added, I added in the narco, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Oh, but it also says that the top three most searched destinations were Puerto Vallarta, San Miguel de Allende, where you are and Cabo uh, mm-hmm. San Lucas. And so, yeah, that's just interesting. That just shows that Mexico is becoming more and more popular. Yeah. I mean, I believe it, you know, it's still, um, I, you know, I, I think that, um, a lot of it, even if people, you know, don't want to admit it or don't put it out front. I mean, it's uh, a lot of times it's economic, you know, it's just a uh, Mexico is a decent place to live and it's much less expensive. A lot of, especially a lot of people that are on pensions um, or, uh, you know, social security and, uh, you know, people that maybe they work online, but, you know, they're not like rich. You know, they can't, maybe they can't afford to live in California anymore. They can't afford to live wherever they're living. So they're able to live pretty well down here. And, yeah, there you know a number of the places that are you know there, there's a handful that normally people go to. Um, yeah, so what Puerto Vallarta has been very popular. Yeah, like you said, Medida is another one. Um, Oaxaca, some people like San Miguel de Allende, where I live, and um, 
Queretaro has been getting a lot um, more popular these days. Queretaro is about 45 minutes from where I am. It's a little bit of a, a bigger city. Guadalajara still, I think, is popular. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a good option. And, um, you know, they're going to be bringing money with them. And so, you know, they're, they're still going with the story about people in Mexico City that are not happy with their, you know, being – Pilates studios and uh, another, you know, a third Starbucks, um, you know, but uh, there are some, you know, some good externalities to the people coming there as well. Um, and I think it's just, uh, you know, growing pains or just a regular, uh, you know, thing in a, in a cosmopolitan city, you know, so you have some places where people, maybe they speak English or another language. I mean, this is how it is in cities. All throughout the world, you have migrations um, from all over the world. So I, I don't think it's out of the ordinary or strange that a lot of Americans are going to um, Mexico City, especially. But um, yeah, it's like that that article that you sent me was. You know, I think that a lot of the people that are going to Mexico City are um, are kind of they're going from New York and and Los Angeles. So they're like people that work for tech companies or. You know, the one the article you sent me, the girl was from Slate or, you know, BuzzFeed or whatever. And so it's like a certain type, we could say, you know, that that moves there and they're like, oh, this is just like Brooklyn, you know, and they're the ones gentrifying it. And I could see how those people are annoying. So um, but, you know, again, like I said, they bring some positive externalities, too. But, uh, yeah, that's what's been going on. Yeah, I would just add quickly, there was an, yet another one of those videos from AJ Plus about Mexican uh, Chilangos, uh, Mexicans in Mexico City getting pissed with these influx of gringos. And um, my reaction is, uh, as a Mexican as a, and as an American, um, I, I don't really buy these complaints from Mexicans because mm -hmm. um, I think it's fair. They're coming in legally, uh, the Americans and... So many Mexicans go to America. Mexicans now are uh, Americans. They're not coming to Mexico. Um, the money does help uh, Mexicans in the local economy. And I mean, th these are just things that we have to deal with. I mean, what you don't think here in, in, in Croatia, we've got such a huge influx of Northern European uh, folks just buying up real estate like crazy, jacking up the prices. I mean, the whole world has to deal with this. So I just don't buy. I don't have sympathy really for the Mexicans complaining about the influx mm -hmm. of uh, uh, Americans because, you know, more Mexicans go to America uh, legally and uh, illegally. So, I mean, c'est la vie. Just deal with life. Yeah. And, adapt, you know, the, the you ones know. that I the ones that I've seen that they're featuring in these videos and, they, and they're all from these publications. Again, you know, this like goofy progressive publications and the people that they feature uh, the, you know, the, the, the Mexicans, I mean, they're obviously like uh, American, uh, educated and, you know, they're using all the same leftist, uh, buzzwords about gentrification and, oh, you know, modern day colonialism and all this stuff. And, you know, this is, look, that is not Mexican. Okay. I mean, that, that all that, that those buzzwords and all that stuff that is western progressive talking points all right this is not uh something that's native to any of these um any of these places uh you know throughout the world this is this is something that comes specifically from um a very kind of pampered and uh you know modern uh you know postmodern viewpoint so yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, it's, you know, and, you know, Mexico is, you know, the Spanish is a, is a European language. I think we all know that. Right. So um, there's been, you know, a mix. It's not like, the, you know, a bunch of indigenous all over Mexico city. I mean, these were all people that have immigrated there one way or another. Uh, just, you know, some other news that's been worrying me. I just keep seeing the rapid advance of the great reset in Mexico. It's insane. Uh, in a separate video I saw in Ecuador, I posted it in my um, Telegram that there was some official in Ecuador in some, I forget which city, in this room that literally looked like minority reports with just a whole slew of people at, at computers and at screens. And she's saying we're, they're rolling out 15,000 AI surveillance cameras, 360 cameras. They're going to have a total of 40,000 cameras. It's going to track 
uh, everything, you name it, people, cars, license plates, you name it. Uh, and she talks about pre-crime. And then I'm reading in, in Jalisco, th- th- they're doing the same thing. They're rolling out inf- internet all across the board. They're rolling out the same surveillance thing. Um, it's it's nuts. And then I'm also reading now uh, in, in Jalisco, in, in, in Mexico, they're rolling out uh, basically the, the, what do you call it, the carbon tax, the ESG stuff. You have this Mexico carbon forum. Ex- excuse my Spanish. I think it should be called the Mexico Cabron Forum. <laughs> um, but they're now talking about the ESG, you know, carbon tax for businesses in Mexico, and that's eventually going to affect um, individuals. And and what do you know? It's you know who, who's also participating in it, in it, and where is it being hosted? At my former place of employment, the MIT of Mexico, Tecnológico de Monterrey, the globalist, the lead globalist. Uh, you know, one of the lead, leading globalist institutions in Mexico, uh, education uh, institution. And so, yeah, I just continue to see the rapid advance of this great reset in uh, Mexico. And then, you know, there's other articles that talk about leave your car and save time by using the the, the bus bicycle uh, lane. So basically take your bike, use your bike, don't use your car. And, you know, the goal is eventually just to, to, to pull the car, your car out from under you. They want to, you know, prohibit private vehicles and so they're just saying use your bike it's it's cool but you know they, they mix lie, lies with truth like it's great to use your bike when you can but their ultimate goal is to basically leave you with your only option being <laughs> your bike any any further thoughts uh, on that yeah well I mean, there was a lot there i mean i think that it seems like the strategy for the vehicle thing to get people to stop using so many vehicles is going to be um, energy, you know, and, and carbon taxes and all this type of stuff and, and um, you know, basically demonizing petroleum and, and gas and so many restrictions and things like that and, and taxes that it's just kind of uh, too expensive for your average person to uh, to drive or afford a plane ticket. Fortunately, here in Mexico, as we've talked about a lot, I mean, they have, um, they have a pretty good um, strategy as far as oil and gas. I mean, even though I'm not in favor of uh, nationalization, you know, in a way they still have kind of preserved their, uh, you know, energy industry from anything that's going on in, in, um, in the Western countries. So there's, there's no shortage of gas here. We've had lower uh, prices than, um, than like say the United States, for instance. And, and, you know, with the ESG, obviously the ESG stuff is horrible and um, you know, we should do whatever we can to, to divest ourselves from those types of, of companies that are uh, participating in that kind of thing. It's just a, it's basically like social credit score, but for uh, businesses. And so it's a way for them to wrap us in all of this green stuff and basically force the Green New Deal down our throats without anybody agreeing to it or um, or voting on it. But you know, you know, you can also remember that when it had to do with environmental uh, agreements uh, throughout the world, you know, international agreements that have been made in the past, you know, a lot of countries have signed and said all kinds of things about, yeah, yeah we're going to do that and agree to stuff. And then they just don't do it. So I think that, you know, that can go into the, uh, you know, the play a lot as well. Um, with a lot of developing countries because they just can't, you know, they just, it's like, it's not financially uh, going to work. So, you know, maybe, you know, maybe they say, sure, you know, we'll go wrong, but that doesn't mean that they're actually going to do it. And yeah, as far as cameras, sure. Yeah. I've seen that, you know, cities all over the world, uh, people using more and more cameras as, you know, I guess, again, as uh, you could, we've said before, it's that, you know, as, um, as this technology, you know, gets cheaper and, and more on board, you know, a lot of these governments are going to want to use it. And so I, I, I don't find it to be too surprising. And I, I don't know that that means that they went and, you know, read Klaus Schwab's book and they decided, oh, let's go, uh, you know, put these cameras up. But, it, you know, it just means that they figure, oh, well, let, you know, we're a government and uh, we like to control our people. So let's use this new technology in order to do it. So I think different governments are going to be implementing the technology in different ways. And unless there's just a complete decentralization or, you know, rejection of a lot of the government's, uh, you know, centralization of power, then that's just continue to happen. And I think that's more of a, of a cultural thing. So it's, you know, if people just don't, um, don't, you know, they reject that kind of thing and reject being um, surveilled and the social credit store and all that kind of stuff, then, then they're not going to have it. But if they, go along with it as people are, then I just think uh, the governments are going to continue to use it. 
All right, two minutes to midnight. Any uh, final thoughts? Um, no, I'll just say real quick, uh, the, the Colombian President Petro, we've been waiting to see what he was going to do. And in his newest thing, he he's going to pretty much ban all guns outright. And it's very hard to get a gun, a handgun for a citizen in Colombia. And you can get a sp special permit, but now he wants to get rid of the special permits. That's one of the first things he wants to do is absolutely and completely disarm the entire population. So, Same goes um, for that guy in Chile, that Croatian Chilean Boric came mm -hmm. out and said he wants to get the compass, get, you know, ban all guns. And the guy up in Canada, the same these people are. Nuts, but you know, as they say, you get the government that you deserve. And if the populace yeah. is happy with McDonald's and Netflix, well, you know what? We deserve this. We deserve what we're, we're going to get. Remind us quick, James, where are the best places to find you on the internets? Yes, sir. Uh, easiest thing, jamesguzman.com. Uh, you can check me out, borderlessblog.com for my podcast, and I can do strategy calls. And of course, if you need, Global health insurance, uh, expat health insurance. You can go to borderlesshealthinsurance.com and we can talk. So thanks again for having me on. All right. Enjoy changing the diapers. We'll chat next week. Stay tuned. We got some great guests right after the break here on TNT.